materials for um, the construction of nuclear reactors. Um, I've mentioned that uh, the Russians went in for uh, steel reinforced concrete uh, reactor vessels, whereas the Americans and the French and most of the people have gone in for steel um, reactor vessels. Uh, the question arises, um, they are containing not only the, uh, the uh, nuclear reactor in the core, uh, but of course they are being subjected continuously to bombardment by uh, energetic neutrons. What effect does this have? How do they contain this and what effect does this have on the material? Well, um, the Russians went for uh, steel reinforced concrete uh, containers into which they had mixed uh, graded lead shot as part of the coarse aggregate. Um, this concrete is quite heavy and quite dense and it's not difficult to produce. You, you just replace some of your aggregate with loads of this lead shot, various sizes so it doesn't uh, produce voids and so on. You mix it all in and you produce the, uh, the vessel. Now that resists uh, damage by neutrons very well. It soaks up, the lead will soak up the neutrons, the, uh, any alpha particles are easily absorbed by the concrete, it will very um, effective shielding material. And furthermore, it doesn't seem to show any deterioration with time. What about the steel for a PWR? Well, um, when a fast neutron strikes the um, surface of a steel plate, uh, it's like a snooker ball at the start of a game of uh, snooker hitting the pack. Um, it will strike the surface and it will produce um, a certain amount of metallurgical damage. It actually produces what's called a thermal spike. The tip of the spike is at the surface where the neutron hits and the spike then sort of goes inward into the uh, metal a certain distance. Within that conical um, spike, um, metal atoms can be knocked out of position they can be turned into, they can be knocked out of their lattice site and producing vacancies, they could be knocked into interstitial positions. Um, various uh, kinds of damage can accrue. Now of course neutrons are very small, They're in, uh, typically in a, a cubic centimetre of metal you've got some number times a hundred thousand million 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 atoms per cubic centimetre. So the odd one or two getting kicked out of place is having no effect at all. But of course, if you run a PWR, um, the one at Sizewell, Sizewell B, is a PWR which started up in the mid-80s in Britain. That's the only PWR we have. It's been running for 30 years. So you're talking about running a uh, PWR vessel for decades, 20, 30, 40, 50 years perhaps. What about the effects of neutron bombardment over those long periods of time? Well, um, metallurgists have recognized that there is a slow um, deterioration in properties. Now, the particular property that's affected is what's known as the fracture toughness. This is different from the tensile strength. It's different from ductility. It's a measure of how easy it is to induce cracks to start in metal. And what they found is that over a long, long period of time, the fracture toughness of steel is reduced. Now, um, at normal room temperature and pressure, steel is very tough. If you strike it, it will bend and it won't break. If you cool it down, uh, this was discovered in the Second World War, when they built the Liberty ships, if you cool it down to about zero degrees C, it suddenly suffers a reduction in its um, toughness, the energy needed to break it. So from being very tough, it can suddenly become brittle. A brittleness means that you hit something and it only takes a small amount of energy to actually fracture it. This is this fracture toughness concept. Now, it's been found that with um, 
neutron bombardment, you can actually reduce the, um, the fracture toughness. And I've got a, a curve which uh, illustrates this fact. Um, various things can bring this about. It can be brought about by low temperatures. It can br be brought about by high rates of straining. And it can be brought about by continuous uh, neutron bombardment. So um, how do metallurgists uh, take care of this? How do they monitor the fact that their vessel is still okay? Well, the favorite um, method is when the steel for the uh, reactor vessel is cast or fabricated, um, they take small samples of this steel, a dozen or, I don't know, 10, 20 samples, and when the vessel is completed, they mount these little coupons at various places on the reactor vessel itself, so that when the vessel is put into service, these little test pieces see the same degree of radioactive um, interaction as the vessel itself. So you can uh, run the vessel for a year and then take one of these little coupons out of a little box on the side of the vessel and test it and check its fracture toughness compared with what it was when you made the steel in the first place. And you, can, you might not do that after a year, but you might do it after, say, 10 years and 12 years, 15 years and so on. So it's possible once you put one of these vessels into service to continuously monitor the fracture toughness of the steel to ensure that over the life of the vessel, the service life, which can be 30, 40, perhaps, or even 50 years, you don't um, lose fracture toughness to the extent where your vessel becomes a hazard. That's very important. Um, irradiation does affect the steel. It does reduce its fracture toughness. So it's very important that we actually monitor that as a, a, a factor in nuclear safety. I will be talking further about nuclear safety later, but that's one important um, factor that comes in when we're talking about reactor materials and how we monitor them.